Hey, so today we're gonna fit the dash cam to the... Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. This is what the front of the box looks like. It says over there, big, big road. Now, I've had a big, big road dash cam before, and I fitted that one to my Mazda. So in the bottom, we've got a bunch of paraphernalia here, guarantee and all that stuff. And some explanations on how it works, installation menu. Let's see what we got here. It's quite heavy, I must say. So, it's actually the cables that are heavy. <laughs> this is identical to the portion that goes on my car. And um, I'm gonna show you guys later how um, I take the old one off and put this in its place. Now this is a really nice camera for the rear and I'm just going to stick some double-sided tape on there and stick it to the, the window and then one can use those screws to, to tighten it and get your view right. This is the actual power cable as we can see here. It's got the little fuses and things attached. This is the cable that's going to run to the rear of the car. Now this red wire, like I said in my previous video on my Mazda, when I did that install, you don't need this red wire if you're not going to hook this up to a backup camera. Um, I'm not going to bother with that. So you get this little card with the DVR and it has a QR code on it so you, you need to scan the QR code to download the app and on the other side it tells you once you've downloaded the app um, you're going to connect to the dash cam via your phone's Wi-Fi so you just go into your Wi-Fi settings connect to it it will be called the Wi-Fi name will be star times DVR and you enter eight eights you can see that there eight eights and you're in next thing we got to do is go to the fuse box locations so I'm on page 232 of the manual and I'm just having a look at the fuses that I can actually use. So I've decided that seat fuses are normally live. So I'm going to use one of these uh, fuse locations for uh, the seats for my live, which is going to be my yellow wire. But I need to connect my red wire, the accessory wire, to something that actually turns off when you turn the ignition off. Thinking heated steering wheel maybe. Um, at fuse location number 28. So we're looking at the fuse panel and I'm just going to use a trim tool. Mine's on the left hand side of the car. Yours should be too, no matter whether you've got a right hand drive or a left hand drive. You just take the cover off and inside it actually tells you what everything does and how many amps all your fuses are and what they're for. So that's very helpful. Um, so I might not even need the book. I've got my little tester here, my testing light. Um, you just have to ground it on something metal and I'm just going to clamp it onto this metal thing over there. <laughs> There's a metal bar over there. So um, these green ones over here, these are 30 amp fuses and they are all live. All of them. And virtually every other fuse is also live here, except that one there. Oh, that one's live. So, I I don't really want to mess around with the with these here because these are for the diagnostics of the car, and um, you know some are for alarms and things like that. But I found this one up here, which is for the steering. It's a 10 amp fuse, and it's for the steering. Um, and it's not live so I'm going to use that 10 amp over there and I'm going to use first 30 amp fuse over there so in order to get this thing off we just need to pull the rubber back and uh, just get it off there and um, I can actually just use my hand to take it off don't even need a trim tool it's got a little guiding pin inside here which needs to slip out that's what it looks like behind these are your guiding pins so they go in straight first thing we got to do to get this a pillar trim off is just unclip this airbag thing you got to get a screwdriver in there and somehow unwedge unwedge it Okay, well that's that one done. 
Here we go. It slides out now. Because remember we have a vent attached to this thing. And we can now slide the whole thing out. So I just want to show you guys this clip over here is quite a thing. And what you've got to do is you've got to stick a screwdriver through the hole and you can then press it against the clip on the inside to, to release it. Um, just twist your screwdriver, it must be a flat screwdriver, just twist it like that and then it will unclip quite easy. Um, this one, you're going to need a trim tool to wedge in between the car, the body of the car and this plastic piece just to, to release these because they don't come out very easily. Right, so in order to get this interior trim off, you're going to have to wedge a trim tool in the top portion there, on this side and one on that side and it pretty much comes off pretty easily. I've got that side off and just need to unclip this side and there we go. This is the original one and this is the dash cam and the clips on the inside are pretty much identical. So if you've ever wondered what it looks like behind the uh, cover on the, <laughs> the mirror, that's what it looks like. Now there's another cover over here, this huge cover over here. I have to get my cables in um, inside here and through there and I'm thinking maybe I should just take this cover off as well. I think it'll make it easier to to get the wires sorted. So I'm just going to clip this thing and that should allow me to just work with the wires uh, and get the cables in here a little bit easier. So we're going to just root them in the top and I hope there's space in there for them to to be there because there's a lot of electronics inside here and I don't really want to muck with that. I'm just going to wedge them in there and there we go. So I think that should do it. I don't really want to let the dash cam hang there. So I'm going to clip this thing back into its spot. There we go. And clip the dash cam into place. It's going to be a very, very tight fit once you get these um, wires in. Now I've got both wires coming in the one side and I can see this is not working. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to take these wires through, well one is going to have to go on the other side of this thing. So let's see if we can do that. There we go. Got that cable in there and uh, it is the shorter of the cables. Right, so I'm sorry, I had to put the camera one side, it was actually in my way and I couldn't get uh, these two things clipped on. So there, I've just got that one clipped in. Um, the fit is actually very good, it's not bad, um, except for a, a little line over here where it doesn't quite match up, but that's because of the cables. You've got to find a way to get the cable to come down and then up here because if you don't do that there's a clip here and if the cable gets in the way of that clip you're just not going to get this thing clipped in but it's clipped in it's pretty sturdy it's definitely not going to come off now so guys i just want to give you a little tip this is the power cable is going to plug in up there um, by the camera but you don't want to be running all these wires through this hole over there to get to your fuse box in there. What you should do is run the cable from your fuse box to begin with out here and then pull it to the top and then around your airbag. I just want to show you guys I have the the power cable plugged in and I've tucked it inside the the hood lining over there and I've run it all along here and it comes out over there. You can see it running there and it's going behind the airbag. So if the airbag ever pops, it's not going to 
ripped the cable down and I've got the cable running all the way down there in through that hole and then out by the fuse box so here's my cacophony of wires so I'm gonna connect these now and just test the camera and see if it's working I'm just gonna run the cable to the back now and in order to do that I'm gonna have to remove this plate and under and you just got to tug really hard some of these clips will come off I'm gonna run this cable underneath through here so I'm just gonna pull the cable through to the back and I can then clip this thing back in its place there's the cable there I'm gonna tuck it in under here and then I'm going to pull it through. I'm gonna pull this out as well and then run the cable behind here. What I've done is I've, in order to get the cable underneath here, I've got to bring it through here. So I've just unclipped this thing behind the seats. Uh, just pulls out. You've got to use a lot of strength to pull it out. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is, uh, if I can get in here, Next thing I'm going to do is take this side cushion out of the rear seats here um, and I've had to, in order to get that off, I've, I've had to unclip the bottom cushion of the seat. There's a little clip over here that you, you need to move a tab and then it unclips and then on that side as well there's another one over there. You move the tab and it unclips. So it's the next day. I ran out of light yesterday and I had to stop filming. So right now the cable for the rear camera is actually sitting here and I tried to get this rear bolster off yesterday and I couldn't. The manual says that it comes off in the same way as the old XF but I cannot see the release clip behind here and I can't figure out how to get this thing off. So if any of you know how to do this, uh, pop a comment below. I'd be interested to know but what I'm going to do is I'm changing my plans I'm going to be taking the cable up through there and the manual actually shows you that this entire thing this entire rear quarter panel is one panel so you go to first and clip this section here and then that section there and then you pull it away from the top and away at the bottom and then it'll come loose. It's kind of difficult to see because it's still kind of dark in the car but I'm going to pull this rubber away from the side just pull it away and then you can actually unclip this part here. So there where it says airbag you need to remove this airbag sign with the trim tool. <laughs> it's the easiest way to get it off and then like I did before, um, you need to use a screwdriver and get it into the clip and then release the clip there inside. Right, so I've unclipped the clip in here and as you can see this piece is already coming away. So I just need to unclip that piece over there. There's a clip over there and there's a clip down there. I put everything back together. So the best thing to do is to run your cable up through like I showed you, take this rubber away, pull that panel away, route your wire up through the top there, get it in with a trim tool, just push it in behind that panel, pull that panel over there, away, and there are actually two clips, one there and one there and one down there, um, but it comes off very easily. So just pull it away with a trim tool, get the cable in, through there but tuck it behind hood lining because behind this thing there's a big plastic thing there and if you run the cable in front of it this panel will not clip back so just run your cable through inside the hood lining and tuck any excess cable in behind this big black plastic thing here there's a lot of space in there so here's my camera now sitting here in the back and um, all I have to do is tighten the screws and make sure that it's angled properly now but the phone is connecting with both cameras and um, I'm very happy with the result. So the dash cam is finally fitted 
and as you could see it wasn't an easy journey it is quite a job to do I'm glad it's finally finished and the results are pretty good both cameras are working well so what I want to recommend is that if you are going to buy one of these for your Jag uh, definitely get the one that has a 1080p rear camera you get three options on the seller's listing one with just a front camera, no rear camera, one with a 720p rear camera, and one with a 1080p rear camera. I shelled out a little bit extra for the 1080p camera at the back because I had a 720p rear camera on the CX-5 and the quality just wasn't good enough. It was a little bit blurry, it was pixelated, and it was just plain bad. So I'm very happy with the results of this camera. It's actually very good. What I can also recommend is that this seller is phenomenal. When I was actually trying to test the dash cam while fitting it, in the middle of fitting it, I could not connect to the app to the camera. And what actually happened is I just, you know, sent the communication to the seller while I was fitting the dash cam. And he came back to me within a minute and told me to try road cam instead of Wells car. DVR dash cam app or whatever it is. So I couldn't use the app that is recommended in the box. I had to use a different app which is in the Play Store. It's called Rocam and um, it actually works even better than the Wells Car app that they normally recommend. The seller's after sale service is very, very good uh, considering that I bought this dash cam on AliExpress. And I'm going to put a link down below if you guys are interested in buying this. Uh, it isn't cheap. But it really is worth the money and I've had one of these like I say my CX-5 the front camera is really really great as well and I can highly recommend buying one. So thank you for watching hit that sub button hit that like button and stay tuned. Cheers!